floor. All right. July. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of the Harrisburg University webinar series. Uh, once again, my name is Aaron Spina. I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at HU, and today we're going to be covering an exciting topic that I know a lot of you have been interested in. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new bachelor's degree in esports management at Harrisburg University Science and Technology. So it's a pretty exclusive program, um, not only at HU, but also throughout the U.S. Uh, which allows us to actually offer students a different route into the esports industry uh, other than going in and being competitive gamers. So we're excited. Uh, we have Professor Charles Palmer here with us today. He's actually going to be covering information on the program. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, at the end of his session, we're actually going to be doing a Q&A. So we certainly welcome you to ask all your questions in the chat. Um, two things, just remember, this is being recorded just like our other webinars. So I will be posting this in the chat for you. Uh, and also along with that, this is not going to be related to the esports teams. So with the Harrisburg University Storm, we are not going to be covering topics about tryouts um, or player things like that. This will strictly be about the bachelor's degree of esports management at HU, but we're going to cover a lot of topics about how to get involved in other manners. So without further ado, I want to throw it over to Professor Charles Palmer, and he's going to take it away from here to talk about the esports degree. Thanks, Aaron. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to Harrisburg University's uh, our open house, our webinar series to sort of talk about the various academic programs. Uh, as Aaron said, my name is Charles Palmer and I am the program lead for the um, esports undergraduate program in esports management, production and performance. I also happen to serve as the uh, program lead for our interactive media and we have a center that I run, which is the Center for Advanced Entertainment and Learning Technologies. And all of these sort of have some overlap. Um, but today we want to talk about esports. We want to talk about why the university created an undergraduate program in esports, what we're doing in that space, why we are unique, and some of the advantages that we have over our competitors, but also what you will be able to get out of a program such as like this. So let's jump on over to my slides. And as Aaron said, uh, you can pose your questions and we'll get to those at the end. Um, but are we good, Aaron? You got my slides? We are good. Yep. OK, so I'm going to use this deck just to walk through. And if everyone want, if anyone wants a copy of this, just let me know. Um, at the end of it, I also put our link for our Discord channel. Um, so I'll pop this, this slide deck up there if you want to grab it from there as well. Uh, but let's get started. So why are we doing this? Um, eSport is a thrilling opportunity for people right now. We're finding out that uh, it is one of the few industries that is growing during quarantine, and that's great to hear. But the reason we created it is a little different. We created this program because our partners came to us and said, um, there are ample opportunities for careers in esports, but they weren't finding qualified applicants. They were finding people who had experience in production or in tournaments um, or in sports management in general, but they weren't finding applicants who actually knew the, the differences between traditional sports and esports. And so what we've decided to do, and they came to us with this question, if we could create something, and it took us about nine months, um, but we got a program up and running, and we've already run one semester of courses with transfer students, and now we're running into the fall, which will give us our full-fledged program launch. Um, so we're doing this because our partners asked for us. We're also doing this because there are hundreds of career opportunities, and we'll look at that in a little bit. The skills that you learn in this space are actually management skills. So they can apply throughout the sports field, but also in business management in general. We're just putting an esports spin on it so that you can understand it, but these skills are transferable to marketing, they're transferable to organizational behavior, they're transferable to a number of different areas. We're also doing this is because the inter in our institution is really good with finding great opportunities where we can be thought leaders, where we can do something different than some well-established universities that might have 100 years experience on us, um, but we are not small, we are nimble, um, we are well-funded, and we can do things that other places can't do. And then the last is sort of related to the career opportunities. It's just such a huge growth market. And with a really great trajectory over the next five to seven years, um, not that it's going to say that uh, it wouldn't continue to project large after that, but 
we sort of focus on that window of time because that's the most reliable information that we can have at this point in time. <clears throat> so to talk about esports, um, and trust me, I understand those of you who are interested in esports, we have a number of students that come in and say, I know everything about esports. Um, but I do want to back up a little bit and talk about the entire ecosystem of esports and why a program, an academic program, is so important. Um, if you look here, this is sort of the entire space. Um, here in the center of this circle, we have professional competitive gaming. These are the players that you've seen in the teams that or let's just stick with the players that you've seen out there who compete. Um, and they do this on the national scale as well as the international scale. Um, and we know them by name and we know the games they play. They're actually supported by these things out here. And so one of them are these four ellipses here, starting off with publishers. Publishers are the people who own the games. You know, Riot, Valve, you'll see some of the names that you're probably familiar with listed over here. A publisher is partly responsible of, well, they're fully responsible of creating the game, but they're partly responsible of identifying uh, actual titles that could be competitive enough to be in esports. Um, that's not just them. Sometimes it's the teams themselves and sometimes it's the fan base, but they that's part of their mission. The leagues organize how these games are played by the publishers. It's the job of the leagues to set up the tournaments and the brackets and sort of add credence to everything that's happening along the way of developing this into a traditional sport. Um, and, and so leagues are extremely important. And we see students that have interest in going into league uh, administrative work for a league or working with the leagues to put on performances. Um, we also have events. And so these are maybe your one off events. There are events that are sometimes hosted by leagues, sometimes hosted by publishers, but quite often they are third party uh, institutions, entities that will put on an event. Let's say they put on, let's look at the Smash Brothers space. Uh, one of our great partners out of Philadelphia puts on a series of events and I believe six different titles over the course of the year. And every week they have some other event that's going up. Well, so open play to quarterfinals and then all the way up to the final championship that they'll have. So events are pretty important. The last is the teams. These are who is playing. These are the individuals. These are the organizations that have come together, some really popular names up here, but they aren't all this big. There are hundreds and thousands of smaller teams that play in all brackets across esports. All of those teams need managers. They need general managers. They need social media personalities. Um, they need social media managers. They need strategists. They need finance people. They need analytics people. They need all of these things to make sure that they run. So the teams are a organization of people who get together to play at events that are often hosted by leagues and those leagues are building off the backbone of the work of the publishers in the games themselves. All of these together make up our professional scene, but they are also part of the amateur scene as well. And so these four can't do what they do without having platforms to do that on. You'll see Twitch and YouTube are listed here. Um, ESL is also listed here. They have an ESL TV. It's not as big, but um, it's still there. Um, this is how this message gets across. But the interesting thing happens is once you start promoting it and once you put it on the big stage, now you have consumers. You have people who come in and want to watch those games, whether they are live face to face events or they are streamed on Twitch. You still have an audience and a fan base. As this number grows over the last 15 so years, as this number has grown, we're starting to see a lot of interest in esports. And that interest comes in the sense of these brands. These brands are very eager to be in front of the audience that is consuming these things that are happening in professional gaming. And so these individuals over here, more than anyone else, put a lot of money into esports. And that's what makes it a business. It now becomes a sponsored activity where you have organizations, teams, leagues, publishers, events, as I said, who are all competing to continue this cycle going through here. So our students are learning about, well, given all of those entities and all of those groups involved, where are the jobs? You know, how can I turn what I know about esports 
and augment that with some of the things that are happening uh, and uh, academically and learning things and going through meetings and and understanding and digesting and doing case studies and doing internships. How can I turn all of that activity into a job? And that's what we are here to learn about. And that's what our students are doing throughout their time with us. Um, there's still a debate out there of whether or not esports is a sport. Um, you know, we can think of the differences. We can think of the similarities. You know, they're both team activities. Um, they both spend a rigorous amount of time training to hone their skill set. Um, both have mental challenges as well as physical challenges that they could need to upkeep in order to be part. Um, good leagues, good organizations, there's also a financial incentive for both of these individuals to be doing this. And so although some may debate whether or not it is a sport, I honestly don't care what people think of it. Um, I just like to look at the facts. I like to look and consider uh, what is the industry say about these particular, um, about this particular debate, if you will, in air quotes. And some of the facts are, and, and you know, these are even a couple months old, but you know, 205 million plus viewers worldwide are watching these events via some of the platforms that we saw on the previous screen. Year on year revenue continues to grow. And we see here in the last couple of years, Obviously, 2020 numbers aren't out yet, but we see a continued growth um, still on the plus side. Uh, you know, a particular game is generating $1.4 billion a year, and that's all across. So that's not just revenue, but that's gross. Um, people are watching Twitch at a phenomenal rate. And since quarantine, this number has spot skyrocketed. Um, we see large brands that come in and they are interested in building content creation teams. So your Red Bull, um, you know, Red Bull, who is not directly related to esports, they have a esports content team that is out there just making information, just making videos, just making all kinds of different contents and deals in esports. But then probably one of the other, the most underrepresented, but probably the most important aspect of this is the non-endemic brands. Endemic brands are those brands that are directly related to esports. They sell the hardware, maybe even merchandise. Um, they facilitate how esports or how sports are played in this particular platform. Non-endemic are outside brands that are interested in getting access to the esports audience. They don't make esports peripheria. Um, they do not host games. They don't do any of those things. And if you look at some of these names, you'll be familiar with them but they would love to broadcast to the audience that is consuming esports. Some of these are really big names. You know, Gillette has put in a huge investment um, into some of the top-notch streamers. Um, they run ads on Twitch and they're doing a lot in this space. And that just shows you the more non-endemic brands we see, the more we know that this particular field is growing because people are still willing to invest money into it. So let's talk a little bit about careers. Uh, so these numbers, I grabbed these numbers, uh, you can see right there, uh, August or February 16th, and it was at 1,257 jobs. Um, I just checked today, and due to quarantine, COVID, uh, we're seeing some different numbers here. Uh, I don't think you can see that. Sorry about this. Let me pull this up. Sorry, I pulled up the wrong screen. So this is what I want. So our, you know, the, the jobs that we saw in the previous were 1,200 plus. Now it's 5,100. And if you look down the list, you'll see this is a job that was just posted 51 minutes ago. Hitmarker is a great website if you want to keep in touch of, well, what are the games that are, or what are the, the jobs that are out there? And what are my opportunities across the world? You'll see a lot of these things were just posted uh, today. Sorry, I had to close my office door. My daughter is playing guitar and singing rather loudly. Uh, but we can see that there are a number of jobs that are available. And this is another thing that's that should be um, should be part of your decision making process if you want to go into esports. And like anything else, you want to make sure you go to places where the jobs exist. You can come to this website any hour of the day and you'll find updated job positions being offered. 
Um, those jobs uh, are continually to grow. You can see this was listed as 103 back in February, um, but I have not included the recent job surge. So this number is going to be, again, it's going to skyrocket. Um, and the jobs themselves happen to be in management, um, organizations management, uh, player management, social media management, all those various aspects. Production, other people who are needed to put on a live event. Um, so camera operators, uh, observers within games themselves. Uh, we have network security people. We have network infrastructure. We have IT support, a variety of jobs that sit inside of the production space, as well as just general facilities people. And then we have performance. We have the people who are coaches. We have the people who are analysts in esports. We have the people who are broadcasters in esports. All of them need somewhere to study and train, and right now none of this exists. So Harrisburg University is only the fourth school in North in the U.S. to actually go ahead and build a program. A lot of other schools are thinking about doing it, um, but we found that because of what we were already doing with esports, because of our closeness, because of our collegiate team and what they've been able to do, a number of our partners have come to us to look for direction in this space, and we're glad to bring this program to you so that you can find a, a career and find something that you're passionate and interested in. So uh, we have a good bit of time left, so I'm still gonna go into the curriculum. So over the next four years while you're here, you'll take courses that are foundational to the to Harrisburg University, but every semester you'll have at least one esports course that'll be your primary focus as a major, starting with your first semester. So first semester, uh, there is a competitive gaming sem seminar. It's a small class. It's only one credit. We offered it for the first time this past spring, but it's an opportunity to broaden your knowledge about competitive gameplay. Um, what we found is that a number of students have deep knowledge in one sport or one team, um, or even in some case, just a handful of players. But what this is, is it's an opportunity to look across the entire esports uh, um, ecosystem and focus in on each one of those areas to understand how they interrelate. Second semester is our introduction to esports course. This is a four credit course, so it, it covers a lot of weight. Um, you meet two days a week for two hours each time. They cover a lot of the same thing here, but in four times the depth, right? So where in the competitive gaming, we can only lightly talk about, we spent one week talking about uh, publishers. Here, we'll spend three weeks talking about publishers and their relationship to players, their relationships to the orgs, um, how they make money, how they identify risk within the platforms. So we'll go into depth there with what is esports and as an introduction to it. Um, this is really an esports and management course. Uh, second year, first semester, we have a course called Contemporary Issues. Um, many of our advisors and our partners looked at the curriculum and said, hey, it would be great if you had a course where you can just talk about some of the most pressing issues in esports. Um, just on a phone call yesterday or uh, yeah, yesterday um, uh, with Ubisoft uh, for the Rainbow Six League and lots of things are stirring and coming up in that particularly lots of problems and issues that they as an organization need to face um, and deal with. And we see this happening all the time, everything from harassment, to bad management, to poor con player contracts. There are so many concepts that bring up. And it's, you know, if it didn't happen in this one class, it would have to be sprinkled throughout multiple classes. And this is a great way early in your career while you're here at Harrisburg University, you can focus on some of those issues to find solutions. So the next two and a half years after this class, you can really start applying your knowledge. Second semester is social media management. Everyone needs to know this. Um, everyone needs to understand how to build their own personal brand as opposed to the organization or the league brand, um, what some of the do's and don'ts are, how some of the tools work. Um, even if you don't go into social media, everyone in esports is essentially an influencer to some degree. And this is, of course, where you learn how to use those skills and talents um, for the betterment of, this, of the sport. Um, you'll notice down below, I've been only talking about these upper blue courses, but down below are some of the other courses the students take while they're here at the university. Um, these are foundational courses that you take in a variety of different programs, interactive media, 
analytics and e-business are the three spaces that we draw classes from. Um, and so you'll see some classes that listed there, and sometimes they correlate to each other. So fall the third year, students will take a live event management course where they learn how to strategize, plan, deliver, uh, which is part of execution, uh, refine, test, and document a live event. Find out what works, what doesn't work. Um, students themselves will put on these events uh, for a variety of sports. Right now, we've been looking at Rocket League and Smash Brothers, but as more and more students come on board, uh, you will be able to decide, well, what is the event that you want to host and how can that be done either in face-to-face -face at the university or online? And that'll directly relate in some cases to students who will be doing their esports project or students who are maybe studying analytics, so they'll be collecting the data here. Second semester builds off of that even more where we have a field studies course. Harrisburg University has a number of life sciences program. Uh, forensics is one. Um, there's also geospatial technologies is another one, not in the life sciences, they're on the technical side of the house. But those students do field studies where they go out, study, let's say, spider habitats or plate tectonics. Here, our eSports students will have the ability to do field studies with our partner institutions. So whether it's Allied Esports in Las Vegas or Nerd Street in Denver, I mean, there are other sites around the country that our students will be able to go to. Uh, prior to going, you will study a role virtually, job shadow someone. Then you'll go and spend a week at that facility working side by side with someone, um, putting on, helping to put on and conduct an event and taking on some roles and responsibilities associated with that. And then afterwards, when you're looking for your internship, um, or you're looking for recommendations for a job, our students will actually know people because they work with people in the industry directly. So even before you graduate, you'll actually have contacts with people inside of the space, which is going to be to your great advantage. And then the last year covers two areas that uh, I find near and dear, and that is fan engagement. So how do you build strategies to bring people into esports? This is something that happens in traditional sports all the time, and esports has to get much better. And some of this is technical solutions, but sometimes there are strategies that we can use to engage individuals um, and using organizational behavior skills in order to do that. And then lastly is a leadership course. I expect some of you will become leaders in the esports space, but even if you don't, understanding how leaders, the tenets of leadership, how leader, why leaders are so important and how they run organization is important for everyone. Um, and then you also dot electives around the program based on your own personal interests. So whether that's the production side or just the business and management side or the technology side, you'll be able to incorporate some very specific and in some cases very unique to HU courses into your degree. So just have a couple minutes here and I'll go through a couple final uh, things here. One in structure, um, or I'm sorry, we're still in curriculum. Uh, but we're starting an esports fellowship program. You'll be hearing more about that soon. Uh, our students have done field trips. This is where the students went to see Philly Fusion play in Philadelphia. Esports club is actually the largest club on campus. Um, well over 100 members on paper, but I bet there's probably 65 or so students. Many of the students in this program um, are also part of the esports club and they bring what they learn over there. We've had students who have already done internships. Um, some of those have been these four students around here. And if you visit our Discord channel, um, Saban here, his, he has a little recap video from his internship. He worked with the Susquehanna Sonics on the content creation team um, and with the production artist there. Um, but we've had some students who have already started embarking on this after only one semester with us. They've gone out and found opportunities or they worked with us to find opportunities. Um, Saban isn't technically an esports student. Uh, he's uh, he's going into his senior year, but he's always been interested in esports and he's been focusing his production work in interactive media towards esports. So he's taking what he's learning and sharing it with some of the other students as well. And then some of the reasons for all of these activities that we've seen, whether they are in the classroom or working one on one with other people is that as a student, you need to learn or our advisors wanted us to make sure the students learn to speak knowledgeably about eSport, that they understand how to uh, implement an action plan, that they are great communicators, and that they understand what it takes to put on a live event. 
the program is structured around right now three individuals will have another faculty member joining us next spring. Um, I serve as the academic program lead and I'll co-teach a course here or there. Chad Smeltz, who is actually the director of esports for the HU Storm. Um, thanks, Aaron, for wearing a jersey today. Uh, and then we're bringing on Dr. Metz, who will actually take over for me uh, in the next year as the program lead itself. Uh, but we don't do it by ourselves. We have our partners that we're working with. Um, HyperX is a little premature to put them on this list here, but we've been in conversations with them right now. Twitch has been a great help in building this curriculum. They've given us content. Um, they are going to be offering scholarships in the future, so some of you will be able to apply for that. And then we have some other partners who are offering internships or just their own knowledge in the space itself. And so that covers what I wanted to talk to. I know Aaron has a few questions that I'll answer. Um, I'm going to leave this slide up here for a little bit uh, because it has our Discord channel. So if you want to, that's an invite. So if you want to go in there, um, our HU undergraduate students in esports are in that Discord channel. They answer the questions. I try and answer some sometimes, but it's a great place if you have ongoing knowledge that you might need or you just want to connect with our students before you get here. That's a great place to do it. So Aaron, I'll take it back to you. Are you muted? Thanks, Charles. That's a lot of great <laughs> information about the program. I had to take myself off mute, of course, to be able to talk. But uh, no, that's that's really awesome that you know this is being offered through HU, and we're giving our students a different route into the esports industry. Uh, Charles mentioned my shirt. Coincidentally, this is actually the one-year anniversary of HU becoming the first ever Overwatch national champion. So you can see it at the top of my shirt there. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, but other than that, we did have a lot of questions come in, and it's good because we got uh, we got a few minutes to be able to go through these. So um, <clears throat> just going through some questions. Uh, Curtis asked a question here: Would students that plan on taking this program? be able to be involved with the esports team for the HU Storm? So each semester we have probably two students that work production for the Storm. So uh, when they have events that are running on campus or in the Whitaker Center, um, if we need graphic assistance, people who are doing overlays for Twitch or banners for Twitter, um, yes, so we normally, again, it's only probably two students or so that are working that, that are doing that, um, but yeah, they exist. Awesome, and also too, a couple questions came in about this. Um, is it possible to take this program or courses a, as a minor or even like a dual concentration? So we're at HU? Yeah, we're working on that right now. The, the obvious fit is our e-business program. Um, so in the next couple of months, uh, what we will do, well, what we've already been doing so far is we've looking, if a student wanted to go e-business as a major and focus on e-sports, how would they do that? So we're building a concentration in e-business in order to do that. But we'll also see the reverse happen as well. We'll see students come into e-business, uh, sorry, e-sports, and then they'll focus heavily on the management side and pretty much not so much on the production or the performance side. Just uh, one of the things at the Harrisburg University is when we start new programs, we don't start with the concentrations. We start with a list of courses that are interesting to the students, so then we can learn more about how the students are uh, digesting that information, but also what our industry partners want to see, and then we build the concentrations outside of that. No, that's good information regarding the concentrations. Um, you know, certain programs at HU have concentrations versus others where you actually have more of a format to be able to go through and really select the track that you'd be able to go through and kind of tailor your education. So that's great information. And uh, a question came in from Gregory. Um, being an esports coach, of course, requires skill. Um, so Essentially, are, are there going to be tracks to be able to offer, you know, coaching requirements, coaching techniques, thing, things along that line to get into the coaching side of esports? So we are developing coaching. Uh, it will be a concentration eventually. By the time you guys get to your sophomore year, we will have three coaching courses. Um, sort of the philosophy of court of coaching um, uh, and player management and sense, uh, but then sort of higher level coaching as well. And we're, we're trying to figure out the third course in that sequence right now. But the first is the philosophy. The second is hands on actually coaching uh, virtual and face to face players. 
And then the third course is probably going to be focused really solely on it'll be like an independent study or directed study because you'll dive deep into a specific game. So right now we're working on actually building some. I don't think I've told anyone this, but we're building a coaching simulator right now for esports. And we're working with our coach for League of Legends and our coach for Overwatch. So Joe Meister and Alex Chu, um, special to really well recognize, rec recognize coaches in the space as well as ex players. Um, they're also involved in this particular program and they're helping us out on this on the administrative side. So yes, we will have some coaching courses. We're also, like I said, building a coaching simulator so that students can try out what it's like to be a coach. And that's a great update for everybody to hear. Like you said, new information, so that's good. Um, Amber posed an interesting question, but I think it's actually good because of the um, young stature of this industry, uh, you know, not only with professionals, but also too with the esports athletes themselves. But do you think it's important that as part of the curriculum, uh, there's going to be an emphasis to be able to help, whether it be players or working professionals, uh, develop or touch on maturity to go work on in this, you know, type of industry on a professional and a personal level? Great question, Amber. I, it's a really good question. So the competitive esports course that I was talking about the first semester, second year, that's one of the big topics to talk about there. Um, we are finding, and so aside from teaching at the university, I'm also on the board of a local esports organization. Um, and one of the things we've been finding, especially in the Rainbow Six Siege space, um, not so much in Rocket League or the others, but that players are being taken advantage of and most of the time for their age, right? So you get people who've gone through high school, they've decided they're really good and they want to try and go pro. They find an organization that'll bring them into an academy or a challenger league um, and sign them to a contract that's so out of whack and favors the organization and not favors the player and players are eating it up. Um, a couple months ago, there's a huge Twitter storm that we were involved in where we found a very prominent team was paying people zero dollars until the end of the season if they won a competition. Um, and that's just ridiculous in this space. So one of the things in that course is really bringing awareness to this so that we can educate our students who can then go out and educate others about what's going on. But it's a good question. Thanks. And also to just kind of go into the other nuances of esports and the other areas, um, is it possible to be able to do a you know management side of esports, but also to tie in areas of graph design or animation? Yeah, so it, that's going to be an interesting one. The main core of esports covers a little bit of everything, um, but then the students will have an opportunity to take up to three, if not four, esports electives. Those electives can be in graphic design. They can be in more management stuff. Um, they could be wherever the students are interested in filling out. On top of that, the university also has free electives for the students. So if they've run out of the esports electives, let's say they can still take more courses under the umbrella of a free elective, as long as it's offered here at the university or it's something that's offered at one of our partner institutions, or if you want to transfer that in, you've taken it somewhere else, all of those things apply. And so um, also, too, uh, I, I think one of the good things, and this goes to college as a whole, but especially with esports being a, a newer field, uh, would you say there's any topics or suggestions that you would recommend students, um, you know, look into before this major? More importantly, what are some things they can start preparing themselves for before entering this type of major? That's a good one. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way. One of the things I often tell people uh, that sort of wondering if they should do the esports um, field, I, it, there's one answer um, that I think is very applicable, and that is the case of we can teach you everything about the esports industry. We can teach you the jobs, the careers, the skills that you need to be successful. What we can't teach you is interest and passion. Right. And so you should be interested in esports, whether it's on the management side or you're just an Uber fan and you love everything about esports as a career. Um, but you have to have that passion and be interested in the space. We can't give that to you. In preparation, one of the best thing you can do is be knowledgeable about the space and not just by watching games. Um, go out to do a search for esports news. You know, check obviously some of the big places like ESPN. But um, there's a great podcast, The Business of Esports. Um, one of the hosts from that podcast just wrote a book. We're actually adopting it into the program. 
um, and he's offered to guest lecture for us. But that podcast is a really good dissection of behind the scenes of esports. Yes, they'll talk about some of the big fancy teams, but they'll also go and talk about the deals that some of those teams had to make and what they had to give up for those deals or how sponsorship arrangements really work or um, you know, one misconception about organizations, and I'll, I'll just put this out there because it's a good thing to think about, is one misconception is that a, like a uh, 100 Thieves makes a lot of money off of merchandising. And really, if you talk to those organizations and you look at their bottom line, they make about 3% of their annual revenue comes from merchandising. It's all the other things. And so when we were talking to students, they all just assumed that, well, you know, that merch goes directly to the orgs and the orgs make a lot of money off of that. And that's really a small, small, small bit of it. There's a lot of lawyers involved. There are a lot of accountants, analysts, all those things are all these careers that are readily available to you um, uh, to be interested in as future careers. So part of the big thing is just finding out about the space itself. And you can do that. The Business of Esports is a great one. There are a number of other uh, 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 sort of online magazines around esports. I can't think of any on the top of my head, but um, they're out there. Um, read up. And also, too, I know we touched a little bit about this, um, about internships, but uh, Amber posed another question. Uh, would out-of-state esports internships be possible while studying as a student? Yes. So one of our students uh, actually did, he's here in Harrisburg, but his internship was remote with a uh, Challenger League team down in Virginia. Um, they are in Overwatch. And so he worked with their um, the team manager. He actually took on the role of assistant manager and he did everything remotely. He contacted the other teams for scrims. He kept uh, player schedules. He updated them of events and activities. Uh, he monitored Discord. He did a bunch of things for them all remotely. And that's one of the great things about this particular field is a lot of the work can be done remotely and it is being done remotely. And also to uh, just just going back into some of the courses, but um, th this is one of the few majors that offers it, but uh, our courses in the major specifically offered right away upon starting the program at HU. Yeah, so first semester, uh, it is competitive gameplay. And so that although it's a one credit seminar course, you get it the first semester and we kept it one credit because we didn't want it to, a number of students actually have trouble transitioning to college life. And so giving them a 15 or 16 credit first semester is kind of um, unfair. So what we've done is we offer, I believe that's a 13, maybe a 14 credit first semester. Um, so two credits shy. Uh, and in there, you're taking that one credit course. It's not a paper every week. It's not a huge lift, but it's a discussion about esports and competitive play, the competitive nature of esports itself. Um, so yeah, we do that uh, first semester and then every semester you will have at least one esports course. And for those of you who don't know, Harrisburg University also has a large esports club uh, that you can get involved with. So uh, a question we commonly get in the admissions department is, um, would this be a way for the esports club to get involved uh, with the esports uh, team at HU? Yeah, so unfortunately they don't mix as much as I would like them to mix, um, mainly because the, the varsity players are really busy. Um, they have their classes, they have mandatory, I believe it's three hours a day practice. Um, and actually the clubs meet, uh, well, this last semester they met Tuesday evenings at six, which happens to be scrim time um, for some of the players on the team. So it's, it's difficult to do those sort of things. But when we have events, the clubs are invited to the events. Um, uh, we had a watch party in Philadelphia and the, with the, the partner, the university has a loose partnership with the Philadelphia Fusion. And the Fusion invited us out to their watch party. And actually the tickets went to the esports club. So those students were the ones that really had opportunity to do that. And I think I mentioned before, many of the play, many of the students in the esports major are actually in the club. And some of them actually have leadership roles uh, in the club itself. So there's a great relationship there. Um, I wish the players were involved more, uh, but that, that's just how it goes. Some of the players actually, the competitive gaming that we taught this past spring, uh, there were 12 students in the class. Six of them were esports. I think five of them, four of them were actually uh, Storm players. Um, and so I, I, I expect that to continue where some of the esports players might or some of the varsity team members 
might not be studying esports, but they'll want to take some of the esports classes to understand more about the, their their industry. And also, too, a very good question just came in. Uh, will the course or the esports management program be offered at the Philadelphia location? Yes, it will also be offered in the Philadelphia. That has not been announced yet, um, but it will be offered this fall in the Philadelphia campus. Um, the only reason it hasn't been announced is um, we haven't officially signed the faculty member that we want to sign uh, that we want to apply. He's gone through most of the paperwork. He's really interested. Just uh, I didn't want to announce it until we really have that person's name. But since you guys came to the webinar, um, we'll share that here. Awesome. Thank you very much. And yep. Uh, just on that end, uh, it seems like we're coming to the end here, so um, we appreciate all the questions. I, I must say this is probably the largest amount of questions that we've had in the webinar so far, <laughs> so uh, we, we definitely expected this. Um, and we also want to keep you in mind as well as um, Professor Palmer is also the faculty lead for the interactive media program. And the interactive media program um, touches on, you know, game development and other areas like that, production. So uh, we definitely want to encourage you to be able to attend that webinar, which is coming up Thursday. Yeah. Uh, so if you have questions uh, specifically related to that, certainly keep an eye out for this. Uh, so other than that, Professor Palmer, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, this has been an awesome session. Uh, we appreciate all the information you've been able to give. Um, are you able to provide us with the Discord link as well? Yep, so that is, uh, so that's there in the lower right hand corner, um, but we can put it somewhere else as well if you want to send it out to people. Perfect, so we can certainly provide that to you as well. Uh, before we sign off here, I'm going to type into the chat um, where you can contact the admission staff, but it's undergraduate admissions at harrisburgu.edu. Um, if you have specific questions, feel free to reach out to that. Or if you're a current senior or a student already accepted to the university, please make sure that you reach out to your admissions counselor. But other than that, uh, again, we appreciate your time today, everybody. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, this will be recorded and sent out, and we hope you join us for more webinars coming up here in the near future. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for the great questions. It was amazing. Bye-bye. You're good. All right. Good. Man, you did get a lot of questions.